Case at 12. The 6 o'clock news starts right now. Happy Independence Day. A little cooler here on the 4th of July in the Alamo City. High temperatures not quite hitting 100 degrees. It was a little cloudy too and it should be getting cooler tonight if you're planning on going out for the 4th of July celebrations. Let's check in with meteorologist Sarah Spivey. Sarah? Yeah, I wouldn't necessarily call uh, 95 cool, <laughs> but it's definitely feeling a lot better than the triple digits as Tim said. And you can see that out to the west. Some storms have developed and so some clouds are going to be moving in here throughout the remainder of the evening. Here's a look at your firework forecast. It's going to be in the 80s. There's a small 10% chance for a stray shower storm until sunset, but after that, temperatures are going to be in the 80s for us, and it is going to be breezy, so watch out for that. Winds will be gusting up to about 25 miles per hour. In the pollen count today, molds are low. They're down from yesterday. They were high yesterday. Speaking of down. The aquifer is down eight tenths of a foot in just the past 24 hours. It could really use a good drink of water and there is an increasing chance of rain in the coming days. Not for everybody, but still a chance. So coming up in the forecast, I'll get you ready as you head back to work for the rest of the week and we'll talk about the return of triple digits soon. Patty. All right, thanks. The search continues for a boater last seen on Calaveras Lake this morning. Law enforcement enforcement search crews continue to canvas areas of the lake. It's located roughly 20 miles south of San Antonio off of 1604. Jonathan Cotto has been out at the lake at that scene all day long as that search has unfolded and teams continue to try to locate that missing man. Law enforcement officials say they were called out here to Lake Calaveras around 930 this morning to find that man. Now, Bear County Sheriff Javier Salazar says their search teams have deployed boats to search the waters of the lakes in efforts of locating the individual involved. It's a race against time where we know every moment counts in situations like these. Search and rescue efforts continue as the holiday atmosphere turned into a somber and urgent situation at Calaveras Lake. Salazar says a group of friends were fishing when one of them, a man said to be in his 30s, fell overboard by accident. One of the other occupants of the boat did jump into the water and tried to save him, but he was unsuccessful in doing so. Salazar says the boat was not speeding and the victim was not wearing a life jacket. Calaveras Lake covers an area over 3,000 acres and has a depth of about 45 feet but Salazar says they have a good idea where they need to be searching. Currently, the Texas Game Warden and BCSO have boats in the water and are trying to get a dive team as soon as possible. Now, the park has been open throughout the day, except for those with boats. They have not been allowed on the water. Law enforcement officials urge everyone to exercise caution and be mindful of water safety as they continue to enjoy their 4th of July celebrations. They are telling us search teams will remain here overnight and, of course, will provide you updates as they become available. Reporting from Calaveras Lake, Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. New at 6, an update now on a shooting at an HEB convenience store on Zarzamora Road. A security guard now facing charges after he shot a man who was allegedly causing a disturbance at that store. We first told you about this on the night beat last night. According to SAPD, that security guard confronted the man as he was leaving the store. That man then walked toward the guard who shot the man in the leg. The victim was taken to Bampsey in critical condition. The security guard now facing a charge of aggravated assault. A man is hospitalized and another is in custody after a stabbing outside of an apartment complex. This happened around 2.20 this morning in the 300 block of Tulipon Walk Street. That's near San Fernando Street and Lanier High School. Now, SAPD says two men were outside drinking when they got into an argument. One of the men then stabbed the other several times. The victim was taken to University Hospital in serious condition. Officers arrested the suspect a short time later. His name has not yet been released. Least. Happening around Texas, a mass shooting in Fort Worth just before midnight may have been related to a traditional 4th of July celebration there. It all happened at a parking lot in the neighborhood of Como where police say a large crowd had gathered. The shooting left at least three dead and eight others wounded. Ten of the victims are adults, one is a juvenile. Fort Worth police still investigating what led up to that shooting and just how many people might have been involved. No idea at this point. We don't know if this is domestic related, if it's gang related. It's too too early to tell at this point. Everybody was right here and there was a they was just popping fireworks, like doing burnouts and stuff. And then there was a lot of gunfire that just started ringing out and then everybody just started running everywhere. And at last check tonight, no arrests have been made. 
four migrants, including an infant, have drowned in the Rio Grande River in a 48-hour span. Uh, now, according to authorities, a woman and an infant were found unresponsive and later pronounced dead at a hospital. A day later, a man's body was found in the river, and in a separate incident, a woman's body was also found on Monday. The name of the victims are unknown. Authorities say none of them were carrying any form of ID. Suspended Texas Attorney General Ken Paxton will not be taking the stand in his upcoming impeachment trial. An overwhelming majority of Texas House members impeached Paxton in May for alleged misconduct, including allegations he used his office to favor the interests of a prominent donor. But Paxton's attorney is calling the trial illegal, absurd, and a, quote, sham that would encourage future kangaroo courts, end quote. Paxton is also accused of retaliating against whistleblowers in the case and obstructing justice. The impeachment trial is set for September 5th. If acquitted by the Senate, Paxton would be allowed to resume his role as Texas Attorney General. The 4th of July celebrations got started this morning at Woodlawn Lake Park. The event started around 1130 this morning. There were all kinds of free events for people and their families to enjoy. Things like water aerobics and Zumba classes. There's also live music, a carnival and food trucks from popular vendors in San Antonio. Now, some people we spoke with have been at the park all day and they plan to stay there until the celebrations are over tonight. Woodlawn is dear to our heart and we've done we celebrate a lot of different milestones here at this park so this is our first time back after COVID so it's great we have got here at seven o'clock in the morning and we've been here all day and stick it out it's been fun so far all right and you don't have to miss out there is still room out there at Woodlawn Lake Park to catch the fireworks they start tonight at nine in the evening of course, that's just one of many celebrations happening around our area for the 4th of July over in shirts. The 47th annual 4th of July Jubilee is taking place. Tiffany Huertas takes us to their downtown celebration. The city of shirts was filled with bands, floats, and fashion. Shirts Parkway was covered in red, white, and blue for the 47th annual 4th of July Jubilee. We like the lights and the sirens. The event kicked off with the Let Freedom Run 5K, followed by a parade in downtown. Happy Independence Day! For Shirts resident John Durnford, this parade brings back special memories. Earlier years, my daughters, when they were in high school, they were on the drum line at Steele High School, and they'd come out in uh, March, and, and uh, we loved watching them. Today, John watched the parade with his daughters and his grandchildren while also honoring his dad. I'm Air Force. This, this is my father's ship. He was a World War II veteran. I thought today I would wear his hat. For John, today is a celebration and a day to reflect. I love being an American. I mean, it's a, it's a great blessing to be free. Tiffany Huertas, KSAT 12 News. And a reminder for people in San Antonio, you cannot use fireworks in the city limits. It's actually illegal. Police say it's a Class C misdemeanor which can carry a fine of up to $2,000. SAPD asks anyone who sees the reckless use of fireworks to call the non-emergency number. That's 210-207-7273. Again, this rule applies to people living inside the city limits. And the Texas Department of Public Safety wants to remind you they will have extra troopers out on the road tonight through the remainder of the 4th of July holiday and they are reminding everyone to celebrate safely. So plan ahead if you plan on drinking, move over, slow down if you see police, fire, EMS, text dot vehicles or tow trucks stopped on the side of the road with their lights on. Everyone in your vehicle should always have a seatbelt on and stay off your phone and be aware of other drivers and don't cut in front of large trucks or slam on your brakes and pull out in front of them. And just a reminder, we have a list of fireworks shows you and your family can see on KSAT.com. There are shows here in the city and across Hill Country to see the full list. All you need to do is scan that QR code right there on your screen. All right, new at six, big news for local students, teachers, and the success coaches who support them. Congressman Joaquin Castro and Greg Casar announced their offices have secured more than $2.8 million in AmeriCorps funding that will go to local nonprofit City Year. Courtney Friedman explains how the organization helps students in eight local school districts find academic success. 
In eight public San Antonio schools, these red uniforms are well known. I wear this jacket with pride. Jasmine Glasper says the jackets belong to student success coaches placed in schools by the nonprofit City Year, focusing on closing gaps in education. The success coaches are all members of AmeriCorps, a federal service agency placing over 200,000 members with nonprofits across the country. Our core members really dig into like like what does it mean to work with students. Glasper is a former success coach and now manages City Year San Antonio's programming. Working with the kids on tutoring, uh, I was the ELA coordinator so I was focused on English so I would do English tutoring in the classroom, outside the classroom. Uh, we would also do social emotional learning. 24-year-old Sofia Farias completed her 10 months as a success coach last year, providing mentoring to improve literacy, math, and socio-emotional skills for at-risk youth. I kind of was an at-risk kid in some aspects, like as far as dealing with mental health and being in a system that doesn't necessarily um, always understand what that means. She says she's able to pick up on things others can't. I'm like, oh, they're acting a little different. <laughs> today so I'm um, we need to talk attendance as well like help making sure like okay like why aren't you on time like what's going on how can I support you Farias is grateful for the new wave of federal funding that will support 58 student coaches this coming school year and all the resources they need to succeed. And it allows us to function. We wouldn't be able to do what we do without it. They hope continued funding will allow students in even more San Antonio schools to see those trusted red jackets and know they have support. Courtney Friedman, KSAT 12 News. Now, if you're 18 to 26 years old and interested in becoming a student su success coach and AmeriCorps member, you can apply online at cityyear.org. Take a check of the roadways out there if you're getting ready to head out to any 4th of July events. There is one trouble spot to report right now. You can see fire trucks responding to something there on the highway at I-10 and West Avenue this evening. Looks like they have everything shut down to just that one far left lane. We'll keep an eye on this and let you know if we learn anything more. But for now, you might want to avoid that area. Give yourself a little extra time if you've got to move through there. All right, still ahead on the news at 6. Severe weather in the U.S. is affecting 4th of July plans for millions of Amer Americans. A look at those storms coming up. Well, mosquito bites are nearly impossible to avoid this year, and it's why doctors want you to be extra careful if you hear that buzzing in your ear. Tonight on the Night Beat, why they say you need to do more than try to not scratch that itch when you get bit. I'm itchy just seeing that. <laughs> Well, no fireworks for some communities impacted by severe weather across the nation. Yeah, it's a big problem this year. As ABC's Rena Roy reports, Rena Roy reports, that's a lot of R's, the weather is affecting travel back home for millions of Americans. Across the country, severe weather disrupting a day of celebrations for the 4th of July. In New Jersey, the show did go on, this parade continuing despite the wet weather. But in Coney Island, Brooklyn, the men's contest at the Nathan's Hot Dog Eating Competition delayed due to storms. New York City under a flood watch as heavy rain pummeled the area. Cleanup underway north of the city in Chester, New York after high winds snapped the tops off of trees. Meanwhile, down south, small hail hitting Conway, North Carolina. Holy mess. In Tennessee, downed power lines and trees. Severe storms also impacting the Midwest. In Chicago, homes and businesses swamped with pools of water and thousands left without power. Well, it looks around like 10 to 12 feet right now of water. Just in the basement alone. I just saw it was loaded up to the stairs. Over a thousand flights canceled coast to coast as millions prepare to return home after the long weekend. Meanwhile, millions from Washington to Florida are facing dangerous heat. Temperatures soaring to the triple digits in parts of the southwest. Rena Roy, ABC News, New York. Rena Roy reporting. You got it. Congratulations. Practice that whole package. <laughs> All right, let's take a live look outside. It is cooler, but it is still hot. It is the 4th of July. It's yeah. what we expect out there. Absolutely. Sarah Spivey is here with a little history lesson. I am. Okay, it's the 4th of July. Yes. Big year in 4th of July history, 1776. Where it all began. That's where it all began in Philadelphia. 
And remarkably, we have weather record recordings from that day from one of our founding fathers, Thomas Jefferson. So take a look. Thomas Jefferson actually was an avid weather observer. In fact, he kept nearly unbroken weather records from 1776 to 1816. And this document that you see right here, notice the title, Observations on the Weather, Philadelphia, 1776. It's July and here's the force. So at 6 a.m. it was 68 degrees. At 1 p.m. it was 76 degrees. Whoa, 1776, 76 degrees. And obviously he was busy, he had some other things to do, but he still managed to keep a record of the weather. Pretty interesting, a little bit of history there for you. A lot hotter than 76 today in San Antonio. We got up to 97 for the high, 97 in New Braunfels, 92 in Yavali, 97 in Del Rio, 104 in Catula, and 103 in Laredo. Those are the highs today. Tonight, as you're planning on celebrating, know that for the fireworks forecast, things look pretty good. There's a small 10% chance for a stray shower before sunset. We are seeing a couple of showers closer to the coast, but after sunset, we're not going to have any chance for rain. Temperatures are going to fall into the low 80s by midnight. One thing I will mention, it is going to be fairly breezy this evening. We're going to have winds from the south at 10 to 15, gusting up to 25 miles per hour. So be very careful. Fireworks can knock over if they get that little gust of wind. So just be very mindful of the wind. Take a look at the weather setup. Again, you can see that there's a couple of sea breeze showers that have developed. Our chance for rain is only 10% in San Antonio through the evening. It's fairly active, though, across the nation, particularly across the central plains where we've got severe weather ongoing right now. And honestly, a lot of the nation is dealing with at least a small chance for rain, including the Mississippi. The one area that's not seeing rain right now, California and the southwest. And that's because here's where the heat high is. This heat high pushes down on the atmosphere, prevents showers and storms from developing, and it increases the heat. And that heat high is going to be moving over Texas in the coming days. It's 112 in Phoenix, Arizona right now. It's not going to get that hot, but it is going to get pretty hot when that heat high moves overhead. Until then, I have increased rain chances slightly for Thursday to about 30% because I think that sea breeze is going to be a little bit stronger. So not everybody's going to see rain on Thursday, but there is slightly better rain chances. And then that heat high moves overhead and temperatures will be returning mm -hmm to the triple digits by Saturday, Sunday, Monday, and into next week, 102, some eight to 10 degrees above the average for this time of year. Looking ahead to the future cast again tomorrow, there is a small chance once again for a few of those sea breeze showers and storms to make it to San Antonio between about 3 p.m. and 8 p.m. Coverage should be about 20% for the metro area, but still that possibility is there. So in your case, that 12 hour forecast 78 in the morning in the uh, noon hour, it'll be 88, still mostly cloudy and not too bad in the morning, then partly cloudy and hot in the afternoon, 96 for the high and a bit breezy with those winds from the southeast at about 15. Neighborhood highs tomorrow, 97 in Hondo, 98 in Castroville, 96 in Seguin, 97 in New Braunfels, 94 in the hill country. So again, Small, slightly better rain chances tomorrow and Thursday, but beyond that, it is going to be hard for us to see much more rain uh, for uh, the weekend and into next week as well. All right, really rooting for that 30% chance tomorrow. Thanks, Sarah. Perhaps the closest time there of the game last night between the Spurs and the Hornets was tip-off because the Spurs ran away pretty quickly <laughs> with this one. It was 0-0 zero, zero at tip-off, and that was the end of that. that you got it. Yeah, the Hornets uh, got buzzed by by the Spurs. And also their top draft pick, number two overall. A little nervous at the very beginning. We got that for you. And it is Joey Jaws Chestnut swallowing up the competition again. thousand generations of humanity yet we have evolved not at all that <laughs> seems about right it is pretty much a custom these days cannot have the fourth of july anymore without that guy the king of hot dogs and indigestion it's the annual nathan's famous hot dog eating contest but first the Spurs opening summer league play in Sacramento yesterday, taking on the Charlotte Hornets. San Antonio's top draft pick, Victor Wimbanyama, not with the team for this leg, but we did get to see the Hornets' second pick overall in the draft. Brandon Miller from Alabama. It took him a little while to get going. 
Never takes Larry Ramirez any time to get going. He now joins us live from Sacramento. And Brandon Miller, <laughs> not a bad game when he finally figured things out, but a couple of Spurs has some pretty good games as well, Larry. Yeah, they sure did. And I'll tell you what, David, the Spurs just absolutely dominated the Charlotte Hornets from start to finish. And defensively, they did a fantastic job on Charlotte rookie Brandon Miller, the second overall pick in the recent NBA draft. Now, early on, Miller struggled and he showed some jitters in the first three quarters. Now, he finished the game with a team high 18 points, but 12 of those came in garbage time during the fourth. Miller had seven personal fouls as he struggled on the defensive end to go along with six turnovers, both game highs. Spurs rookie CD Sissoko guarded Miller a lot in the second round draft pick did not back down one bit. I think he did a really good job. I think uh, physically he's he's already a specimen. I think obviously he's, he's 19 or like whatever. So there's a long way to go for that. But like where his starting point is great. And he's a defensively minded kid. So it was definitely uh, good to watch. I thought we did a good job. Uh, shifted on him, you know, made him take difficult contested jump shots, which, uh, you know, no matter who it is, he got kind of got to live with that. So, you know, we made him take those shots and he's going to hit those some days. And, but today he didn't. So we did a good job. Julian Champagne led the Spurs with 30 points. Dom Barlow had 24 points, 11 boards, and Blake Wesley chipped in with eight. For not being together all that long this summer, the Spurs look like a well-oiled machine in their summer league debut. I got to say, like, you know, everybody came in and everybody walked in and checked their ego out the door, and we all, you know, came together as a team, even with three days of just pra three days of practice and one little practice. Um, everybody came in, checked their egos, and came a team real quick. The Spurs will close out Cali Classic play tomorrow night at 7 with the Lakers, and then it's time to jet off to Las Vegas. Now, Malachi Branham did not play for the Spurs yesterday. The team told us he's healthy, everything's okay. They're basically just letting him rest. Now, he is expected to face the Lakers. David, back to you. All right, Larry, thank you very much. The annual hot dog eating contest today, Coney Island, Mickey Sudo won again. She was the women's defending champ, claims her ninth mustard belt. She ate 39 and a half hot dogs and buns, which she was disappointed with because she was hoping to break her all-time record of 48. After the women's competition, a storm blew in. Lightning delayed pause the festivities for two hours. It had been announced that the event was even going to be canceled, but around 1 o'clock, it was all clear. And Joey Chestnut, the defending men's champ, ready to go. Joey jammed down 62 dogs and buns in 10 minutes. He was challenged by 15 other competitors. He won his eighth straight mustard belt, 16th overall in 17 years. The closest guy to him ate a measly 49 hot dogs in bonds. I'm just speechless every time I see this video. Thank goodness they don't show us what happens. After. I don't want to know. Thank you. We'll talk to the mayor right after this. Welcome back. It is Tuesday. Traditionally, when we check in with San Antonio Mayor Ron Nuremberg, it is a holiday, the 4th of July, and the mayor is kind enough to spend part of his Independence Day with us. The mayor on his way as we speak to the uh, festivities out at Woodlawn Park. Thank you for joining us, Mayor. Happy Independence Day. Happy Independence Day to, to you all. One of the great traditions in our city, uh, our Independence Day celebration at Woodlawn Park. So looking forward to it. Since you are going to that big gathering, it has been another deadly, violent, uh, long holiday weekend across the country with several mass shootings, one last night up in Fort Worth. Uh, a word about uh, the large gathering there tonight and public safety when it comes to that and just your thoughts on, on another weekend like we've just seen. Well, of course, uh, San Antonio is a city of celebrations and so People have enjoyed the Woodlawn Park celebration, our, our Independence Day celebrations and gatherings in the parks and all over town uh, every year. So we will have police presence. Uh, at, that's normal. We're ready for any uh, challenges that may uh, ensue in this day and age. But of course, we want everybody to be safe. It is uh, those events that have been happening in other cities are are tragic and unfortunate. Um, and uh, just uh, one of the things that we have to be aware of and vigilant for, unfortunately, in modern day America. But we, we certainly will have security, as we always do, in all of the large scale events in San Antonio. All right, Mayor, I know this is a holiday week, really, uh, but the staff there at City Hall already getting started on next year's budget. Can you talk about uh, what are some of the items with the big focuses for you this year? Sure. It is a long weekend uh, for a lot of folks, but the city never sleeps and our, our city staff and the council um, are hard at work on the 
FY24 budget, and that is uh, upon us, and we will be ratifying that budget probably here in the next uh, six weeks or so in mid, mid, uh, mid-September. Some of the features of that are some uh, significantly augmented public safety services. We're going to be adding roughly 100 new officer positions in the patrol division for SAPD. Uh, many people have been watching the uh, evolution and the implementation of our animal care services strategic plan and, and really honing in on the challenges that we're having with stray animals and, and improved um, spay and neuter services. We're also going to be adding a significant number of new animal control officers to help with the stray population as well. Of course, um, a lot of the news that's happening from Austin right now is the legislature can't seem to agree on on what property tax reform looks like, but I'm happy to report that the city council uh, has already moved forward with our uh, property tax relief package for the FY24 budget, uh, and we will be uh, increasing the homestead exemption for, to the maximum allowed under state law, so 20%. That's double what it was last year. And we're also uh, very likely to roll back the tax rate as soon as we get the, the final values in uh, once all the protests are cleared. But we'll also be um, rolling back the tax rate just slightly this year as well. So a significant tax relief from the city portion, which is one-fifth of your tax bill, that's already moved forward and, and um uh, thankful that the city council unanimously approved that just a couple of weeks ago. Mayor, what would that relief look like for, for the average homeowner here in San Antonio with, with that relief and the property tax and, and what the city council approved? Sure. Well, the rollback would affect all properties, and, and it will be a, a, a small amount compared to last year where we rolled it back significantly. But that would be a reduction in the actual tax rate assessed on properties uh, all properties, no matter what uh, classification they are, commercial or residential, multifamily, et cetera. The homestead exemption is for those folks um, who have declared their homestead. So one property where they live in, uh, they will have 20 percent of the value assessed um, exempted from city property taxes. So uh, depending on the property, on, on the value of your property, 20 percent of it will be uh, removed from the from the assessment. So uh, that part of your property will not be taxed. Currently, it's 10%. Just a few years ago, we didn't have a homestead exemption at all. Uh, so it's a significant improvement. I'll also add that homeowners who are uh, 65 years and over, uh, they will ha- they already have their property taxes frozen. So whatever it was when you turned 65, it won't go over that. Uh, as well as um, disabled and senior exemptions uh, have already been put in place and, and up to $85,000, and we adjusted that last year. So all told, it's about $130 million uh, exempted from taxes off the city tax rolls uh, for helping you know reduce the burden. And granted, that's only one portion. It's one-fifth of your tax bill, uh, but city uh, council, uh, the, the city wants to do what we can uh, to reduce the burden, considering that everybody is feeling the pressures of inflation, Uh, rising property values, et cetera. All right, Mayor, uh, shifting gears now. Uh, St. Mary's uh, Strip Bar announced recently that they're going to be closing this summer, and they're specifically saying that the construction really buried their chances of survival. What is your response to that? No, the challenges of construction are are obviously significant, but I I will tell you that the St. Mary's uh, construction area is on target. Uh, from the delays that we experienced last year, it's moving forward. It's been open to tra- it's been open to traffic both ways for quite some time now. Uh, we are working with business owners on all sides of that and other construction zones as well to make sure that the public knows how to access those businesses. Um, of course, you know this is the challenge of uh, the small business uh, ecosystem. Over the last several years, they've had a number of things that they've had to um, seen thrown at them from from challenges related to the uh, economic fallout of the pandemic to, you know, again, uh, construction and, and disrepair of infrastructure. But we're working through that the best we can. I am very thankful that the city council approved significant amount of small business grants to help with those construction projects that, that you know, businesses that have been feeling the impacts of the pandemic plus construction. We've had a record number of small business grants to help with that. So we're going to help where we can. Uh, you know, and, and it's uh, it is a challenging situation. We do acknowledge that. All right. Mayor Ron Nuremberg again on the way to the celebration for the 4th of July at Woodlawn Lake. Thank you so much for spending part of your 
Fourth of July holiday with us. Have a good night, sir. And have, have a happy and safe fourth, everybody. Bye-bye. We'll be right back.